Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I just want to address a video that Gail Banks has done. Is it correct to call the other competitors trash? So this is how it starts off. Tough to watch, could be tough to watch. I mean, I've got nothing invested in these other companies' products, but you know, it, it's a very harsh video, very harsh. So, like I said, I want to see if he if his claims are justified, is his product as good as he says it is, and are the others as bad as he claims? So in this video, I'm going to go through his video, address the points that he highlights, and then I'm going to do a quick analysis, if you like, of whether his points are genuine or not, and are his conclusions correct. So the bank's derringer, is it snake oil, or is it an industry leader? So first of all, his basic claims are, the bank's derringer is superior to the competitors because basically it monitors monitors engine sensors so it can give better performance and it can give more safety so as i said it's a harsh intro but is it fair well i think it's probably a little bit too soon in the video to start throwing things in the trash because he hasn't explained anything as yet but i would give it to him it certainly gets your attention for the rest of the video so we'll let it pass and then hopefully it'll come to uh Hopefully it'll be justified or not, depending on your point of view. So power and torque gains. He goes through uh, dyno runs that he did for all the boxes. And this is what he came up with. This is what the test said. So if we concentrate on the torque curve, you've got 829 from factory. Banks Challenger gives an 892 boost. So 63 peak to peak. So here. Um, and best is probably going to be sort of around here. It's a 63 uh though the best is 106 so they're probably measuring it from here somewhere and then you've got the other competition so basically he's saying that the AFCE scorcher is the closest because it alters fuel and air and basically they're all less so assuming you believe those dyno graphs then yeah the bank's derringer beats them all for performance he goes into why it's different i mentioned it briefly there because it alters pressure and boost and the AFC AFE uh, the tuning box also does that but the others are just doing fuel and the other big difference this is the main selling point that he's banging on about for the for the derringer is that it monitors monitors engine sensors and adjusts the tune according to those engine sensors in real time which the others don't so the safety st sales spiel he has this slide here which he goes through the like the safety issues as he sees it so exhaust gas temperature altitude dbf accelerator coolant transmission uh full power timer all sound good i'll get to them in a minute he also has a little feature or a little segment in the video here which he talks about the ecu basically fighting the the uh, tuning box because the other tuning boxes don't know the EGTs, they don't know um, uh, engine coolant temperature, excess, uh, etc. You could get, end up in a position where they, the, their tuning box is fighting the engine's ECU. So you could feel that as like a power coming and going with the others. And his claim is that because the bank Derringer is, is monitoring these things you don't get this fight between the stock ecu and the uh tuning box so if i can just address the points that he covers in this slide here banks derringer monitors key engine parameters for safety is the main claim that he's making so with regards to egt other boxes will re rely on the factory ecu pulling the fuel so although they don't measure it directly the factory ECU does, and the factory ECU still has ultimate control of the engine. DPF, he talks about DPF, but it's not exactly clear what the Derringer does when it detects that the ECU has put, gone into a regen cycle, so I'm not sure what we can say about that, if anything. Uh, he mentions about gas pedal um, and how the Derringer can limit what it does according to the uh, pedal position. He goes on about coolant temperature, um, how it can detect hot and cool uh, water temperatures uh, so if the engine is cold i.e. you've just started it up on a cold day it won't do anything until the engine is up to temperature which is a fair enough point point. Um, then it goes on about bypass the derringer can bypass itself if there's an issue are those safety features that he lists really necessary the, the engine's ECU still has control of the engine so I don't really see it being 
a safety issue with regards to exhaust gas temperatures. The the other tuning boxes in the test are not going to make the exhaust gas, exhaust gas temperatures high enough to be dangerous because the factory ECU is still monitoring them and will take appropriate measures to reduce the EGTs if it takes us too high. So maybe this is a bit of a um, bit of a non-issue. Uh, the gas pedal. The others, other tuning boxes, none of the others in the test monitor the gas pedal. Um, the way he puts it, you can definitely see the benefits of the uh, of a tuning box knowing gas pedal. For example, if the tuning box knows that it's a hundred percent throttle, then obviously you want power. If the gas pedal is at like 10 20 percent, it's pointless really at doing anything because you're not requesting uh, the power that it can give, the extra power. So yeah, for sure, that's valid, definitely. The gas pedal, to have the gas pedal, definitely advantage. Cooling temperature, yeah, ultimately, for ultimate engine safety, I don't think the others are gonna damage the engine because of uh, high cooling temperature because the stock ECU is always looking after that. But again, it is something nice to have in the tuning box if it can do something with that information, then yeah, it's the definite plus. And the bypass, look, generally I'd say that the other tuning boxes in the test are probably going to be ultra reliable, like they're probably going to be like gravel in effect, yeah? But I suppose there's always a chance something could go wrong. And the fact that if something does go wrong internally inside those boxes, that it can detect that there's a problem and like have a relay in there that just bypasses the signal. So the signal has a is physically con the input and the output can be physically connected together with a relay and bypass all the electronics in the tuning box yeah i mean if you can put it in there it's it's a nice thing to have i don't think it's a, like a big thing for uh for a manufacturer to do so really they should all do it but you know like i said they are tend to be like gravel i'm, I'm pretty sure like they're not going to go wrong anyway so you know it, it, it's not a critical thing but it is a nice to have feature just to wrap it up then really like the monitoring the ecu and the cooling temperature is not strictly necessary for the safe operation of the engine but it does but if the if the tuning box can monitor the engine sensors it, it you can definitely run a more aggressive tune without bumping into um without creating check engine lights for ultimate safety i don't think it's a safety issue really and that basically that's the thing i'm trying to say here it's not going to affect the, the the life of the engine, in my opinion. But from a performance point of view and for a fuel economy point of view, I can definitely see how there could be benefits. If I was going to be ultra uh, critical of what Banks is saying, that he's making it sound like it's a safety thing, where I would say it's not really a safety thing. It's more performance and a, and a, and a, and a, and a fuel economy thing. About the bypassing, like he's saying, how important that is. But I've, like I, I did mention, you know, it's like gravel. I don't think you're going to have an issue. Yeah, okay. Let's say it's a safety feature to have a bypass for the electronics there, that so the engine uh, doesn't stop uh, working, doesn't cut power completely. So we'll give that to him on the bypass. So in summary, is the Derringer more advanced? Absolutely, yeah, of course it is. If, if it's uh, monitoring the engine signal, engine sensors, then yeah, it's, it's more advanced. And it does open up, you know, massive, massive, massive possibilities. I mean, they could do a lot with the tune of that, um, of their tuning box when they know that information. So having said all that, are the other tuning boxes trash? Which is exactly, basically what Gail calls them, trash. Um, I think it's too strong a word. I don't think they're trash. I think the fair word would be to say that they are basic and his product is advanced. That I think that would be an accurate an accurate description of the situation. And then moving on to the conclusion. So is the Derringer superior? Well, assuming, very important word here, assuming the bank's Derringer genuinely exploits the possibilities that you get from monitoring the engine sensors then in principle yeah the derringer must be far superior to the other tuning boxes that do not do that and with regards to the future of these things i think as, as factory issues become more complex uh, more difficult to rewrite um, i would say that the things that the derringer or how it works is going to become the norm as of today the in my experience, from my knowledge of the tuning box industry, I'd say the Derringer is one of the leading tuning products in the industry 
it may be the best I don't know that I, uh, other tuning box manufacturers in the next five years will probably all be tapping into the um, to the OBD into the into the can data to uh, make their products better in summary I thought I think it's unnecessarily harsh uh, the way he puts it with trash I understand why he did it to get attention uh, obviously to sell his own product I think the more accurate word would be to say that the Derringer is the much more advanced than the other tuning boxes that that are in the video I'd say that is a, um, a fair a fair evaluation of the situation so that's the video guys so, as always if you enjoyed the video please subscribe vote on it and I'll see you again next time